Did you kill your ball? What'd you do? Yep, he killed it. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? We're doing well. It's hot. The heat finally got here. It was 99 or 98 yesterday. I think we broke some records. It's supposed to get really hot today, but right now it still feels good. I want to get something done out here before that heat rolls in. And I'm thinking it's time to plant up these pool pots. And I need to do something with the disaster that's happened on this table. I had it so clean. And then plants and some other things happen. Having people over tonight and over the weekend, so I just wanted to get these looking right. The pansies, you know, that heat yesterday, they're just kind of, blech, they're not looking so hot, which is pretty normal when it gets that warm. You can see they're still holding on. They're just not looking their best. They've seen better days, and it's just going to keep going like that for a while. As long as it's hot out, they're just going to keep fizzling out. Here's what I want to do. I need to get through this quickly. I need to get out on the road fairly quick. What are you, why are you whining? What I'm thinking, I had originally planted, planted, <laughs> we got garden on the brain. I had originally planned on putting Ensep Morelliae's, the red obsidian bananas in each one of these containers. I liked how the red looked and from the bonfire peaches that are in these. I figured that would go well with the banana cannas that are going to be up over there. I just did a whole lot of talking and wasn't even recording, so I don't know what I need to repeat. I, I was at a produce stand, a farmer's market. Don't you come over here to shake off. I don't want to get wet. I had some Edinidia palms and I was like, you know what? I think I, I, I kind of, I, I sort of want them in these containers. I love the way they look. They're beautiful. The price is fantastic. I'm thinking I would really rather have those insets down over here, which will be a project for another time because that whole area is getting redone in a couple of weeks while you're just having the time of your life right now. The Adenidias, I have a love-hate relationship with them. Sometimes they're great palms. They're not the best to overwinter indoors, though. They really like things hot and warm, which just isn't, I mean, most people don't have that. Unless you have like an atrium, really, really big, bright windows that get sun all day long. And then there's spider mite magnets if you don't have the humidity and everything and generally you know at an idiot palms you get like three to five years out of them indoors kind of like a coconut and then they just kind of bleh, in fizzle away unless you have all those things i was talking about you know nice bright conditions and warmth and everything but um i was thinking God, he is so distracting distracting in the best way though so the thing though is we got the heater in there right so maybe the adenidias would do okay in the winter time I'm trying to justify this to myself. Go, just go with it. I saw how well this areca palm did this past winter. I mean, it just grew and grew and grew and flushed out also. Really, 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 really did not appreciate the jump from 50 degrees to 98 degrees. That, that was a lot. That's a whole other thing to talk about. Watering has been a challenge because the groundwater is still pretty frigid. So like the plants are out here baking and then you hit them with that ice cold water and it's that can kill them too. Now it's done is done. Look at the rose here. Hot paprika. Just love and life. Strawberry? Not so much. Not so much at all, actually. I need to get that down. Make sure that gets some water. Okay, I said I needed to go, right? Right. I want to get out of here before <laughs> the sun rolls back around onto the patio. Whoa. That is a lot of pollen. I don't know how well y'all can tell. I have my sunglasses on. I shouldn't be doing that when I'm trying to use the camera. Can we do something about this? Probably should have flicked the little helicopter things off of the wipers first. There we go. That's better. Do I need new wipers or is there junk stuck? There's just junk stuck in there. <laughs> Look at the hood of the car. That's disgusting. And I just washed this thing, but washed, like took the hose and rinsed it off and used a glove on it like two days ago. Everything's so lush and so green. The sky's nice and blue not a cloud in the i like when there's some clouds but still it's nice to see a blue sky and it's 83 degrees feels so much better than it did when i was outside filming all those plants and then yesterday because i filmed the plants the day before yesterday yesterday got up to 98 it was too hot that's too much that's not necessary much for this time of year anyways this is what's called nervous rambling because i feel like i'm doing an impulsive thing that i shouldn't be doing but i'm gonna do it anyways still excited the prices were, you'll get to see them. And I don't, this is all probably a huge waste of time. I don't have my tripod thing hooked up. It fell off the window. I don't actually look at the screen if I'm driving and filming, pointing and hoping for the absolute best. But uh, I'm not far away. This place is fairly close to home. So maybe we'll get to look around at the plants there. I don't know. I'm kind of eager to just grab what I want and get the heck out. Uh, we will see. Some nice bananas. I'm by a very busy road. And there are a lot of people here. 
and I'm feeling shy. Look how big these Adenidias are, though. They're actually, the pots are big. Plants, meh. And yeah, so that's that's basically it. There's not much more else to see here. Nice looking palms, though. Oh yeah, I made the right choice. These are absolutely beautiful. I know you can't tell. Let's give it a minute. Get them unloaded and have a better walk at them. Hey, pumpkin, how you doing? How's my baby girl? So nice to see you. What a delight. Just ran inside real quick to take off my pants so I can unload the palm trees. I should spit the shorts, switch over to shorts. Hard work clothes, you get, okay, I'm sorry, pumpkin. My mistake, I should have known she just wants treats. Here you go. That's better, okay, palm tree time. Huh, what do we think? Aren't they pretty? Let me get a better backdrop. Here we go. Just wheel this on over here. Turbo's back in the pool, he's always in the pool. If anybody's ever wondering where Turbo is, he's probably just swimming. Oh, he sank the ball. He chewed up holes in it, so now it sinks. And then he'll wait for it to float back up, and then he kicks it back down. It's nice that he can entertain himself. Look at those trunks, mostly on this one. So when I was there the other day, they had two that looked almost identical. This was one of them, and they still had the other one, but it had one of those big red labels on it that said sold. So I spent a while trying to find the closest match. This is, this is the best I could do. That's the only problem with doing triple trunked palms that need to be symmetrical is it's really tricky to find a pair. That's always been an issue that look close. And these, uh, well, they don't look that close at all, but this was the best I could find. I was figuring fairly soon this sheath is going to come off. That'll expose a ring about there. And this one can feel it on there. That's ready to go too. So it's more about just getting some of that height. So that one has some nice height in it. And I like the variability in there too. Like I think that would be nice actually having the one trunk that's bigger. That's what's going on there. The peach trees. I'm just going to pull these out. I have these planned out to go into the driveway. I have some planters over there. I've talked about it over and over and over again. I'm sure y'all be excited for me to get that done so I can stop bringing it up. But the problem, I need to remember to not take deep breaths. Was that obnoxious? The mic I'm using is like right up in my face. I need to wait for this heat to move through here. If I move these to the driveway, they're just gonna cook and fry. So I'm gonna unpot them. They're still in their nursery containers, just sunk down into those pots. Should probably find a tarp. This is going to make a mess. Yeah, it's gonna make a big mess. Yeah, I'm gonna get them out of there. The Edenidias I'm going to put into these as catch pots. These are not the most attractive containers. There's two here, they're just stuck together. But they slide into those pots perfectly, which makes it nice in the fall time because I can just lift them right back out and move them into the grow space. <laughs> Which is really nice. We have like unexpected cold. So you'll be able to see that great. We'll be talking about it. I don't need to be talking about any of this. I just need to shut up and get to work. Whew. That's done. I don't know why I made that noise. It was not, there was nothing hard about that. It was really, really easy. You know, just pulled up some pansies and the peach trees just lifted right out. All according to plan. Look at all the peaches on them. Look at them. They're just covered. I went in and I left the osteos and the lettuce in there. I think the osteos actually might do well in the driveway, but the lettuce, eh, probably not. Got all the annuals and extra soil onto the tarp here and just loaded off to the garden some spots that needed to be refilled. I didn't use a lot of new soil when I planted up these for spring containers. I want to make sure that I backfill them, refill them with fresh soil. So I'm not going to use the catch pot. I started to pick them up and it just like crumbling in my hands. They're really cheap, really old. And I remembered that, are we supposed to be doing that? No seashells, Turbo, no shells. Uh, I forgot that last year I filled these up almost three quarters away with gravel. I don't know if you remember, if you were here last year, then maybe, maybe you know what I'm talking about. The storms were blowing these pots over and had some of them breaking. So there's a lot of weight in the bottom of these. So this that's not going to fit. To get those in there, you can only have a small layer of gravel in the bottom, but that's okay. I don't think either one of these needs a repot. This one, I mean, this one could probably take it because its pot's busted up. But uh, from feeling around in here, I'm gonna look at that. It's still plenty loose. And I actually I really like this soil blend that's going to hold on to moisture better than what I was going to use. Use a spum with potty mix, which hold on to moisture just fine, but not quite fine enough. There it is. That's where we are now. I'm just gonna try and get these in here and pick out some annuals and get them nice and colorful. Oh, oh, look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? Good decisions. Great decisions. Enough with that feeling guilty about 
getting the plant stuff. There's no need for that. I mean, it would be nice if they were more symmetrical, but that's okay. I mean, as far as the palms looking somewhere, but yeah, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Huh? What do we think? I love it. I think they're fantastic. Some of the plants have to get like crammed together kind of tight. Not something I haven't done before. I do tend to go really heavy with the annual planters. So there will be some survival of the fittest going on on there. It doesn't look fantastic. Things need to fill out. These are tropical rose variegated sun impatiens on each side here. And then these are the vigorous orange variegated sun patients on each side. Then I went super tunia honey, super tunia vista jazzberry, super tunia vista bubblegum. I think I might need to rework that spacing. Another jazzberry, another honey, jazzberry, bubblegum, jazzberry. It's quite possible that the bubblegum and the jazzberry are just going to completely devour the honeys. But the thing is with the honeys, we've talked about it before, they tend to be sort of a weak, pathetic petunia. I don't always have the best luck with them, but I like the color. So I grabbed a couple to throw into each container, thought it would pop. Don't really think that it goes great with the variegation on that foliage. But like I said, I have a feeling that Within several weeks, the other, the Vista petunias, if it says Vista, they're extremely vigorous. And then there's just the regular super petunias, which is what the honey is. Vistas will, they'll probably eat them, but maybe not. We will see. I love it. I think that these are, I mean, they don't look fantastic right now, but they will very soon. The impatience in here, those will start to form sort of little mounds, domes, and they'll even out and be orange and pink with the purplish pink and the pink, maybe the yellowish orange from the honey. Oh. We'll see if those hang on. If they don't, I may throw in some Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime Ipomias. So on the fence about using them out here because they're toxic. I mean, there are a lot of toxic plants out here, but it's just I'm trying to gauge things with the puppers, the giant pupper. Because I do think that like a splash of green mixed in with those would look nice. The Jazzberry and the Vista Bubblegum, they're kind of similar. You can't tell because I had to do some root pulling, some tearing to get these together with the, maybe not quite as purple as I was hoping for. There's more of a contrast in person. I'm okay with that though. I think that it'll look great. Maybe they'll contrast, maybe they'll complement each other. Eh, we'll find out. All right, I'm hot and very sticky. You need to go take a shower and we'll pick back up with another project later on. <coughs> what do we think of the Supertunia sky blues in there. I, I don't know if I'm feeling it. I just kind of set those down to see how it went. I don't, mm, I don't think that's for me. It's the next day. Well, no, it's not the next day. It's several days later. A lot has happened. It's been a very busy week. Technically, I started filming this Thursday the 12th. We are just a couple days before the video comes out. I ain't got anything else done out here. No, I wanted to get these done because Thursday was my birthday, so I was having people over and just one of these out here. That's so like, if I can do anything on my birthday, it's get dirty, go outside, sweat, and play with plants. So I got to do that and it was fantastic. Then went to baseball games and just had a fun weekend. Don't those honeys look fantastic in there? I hope those pull through. I like how those look with the jazzberries. It even has me thinking that I don't think the bubble gums need to be in these. I think the jazzberries are gonna hold their own just fine. So I will probably maybe pull those uh, Super Tunia Vista bubble gums out and use those in a different arrangement or some hanging baskets, something like that. Cause the colors, like they're not different enough. I mean, they're kind of different enough, but not really, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I shouldn't gesture when I got the Cosmo in my hand. I suppose when they're far apart, it's okay. But then I think over here on the other side, the way the plants are shaped, you can see them closer together and it just kind of looks like the bubble gums or faded jazzberries when they're mixed in like that. Yeah, I don't think it's necessary. I'd be good with just going with the jazzberries. But what do we think about the sky blues? Is that what these are even called? I think that's what they're called. Looks nice, but these containers really don't need any more petunias. And I think I just like it with the honeys and those jazzberries. This is the best those have ever looked. So I really hope that those like actually grow and do well and the best way for those to do that would probably be to pull there's a loud sneeze coming from the neighbor's house the best way to make that happen would probably be to get the vista bubble gums out of there so i can space those better so they have some more room and don't get strangled out but what do we think i know i already asked but aren't they just beautiful they look so nice and from down here on the other end fantastic and someone needs some attention 
Talk to the camera here. Don't be rude. Not being rude. That's what parrots do. He's just trying to join in on the chatter. But I think you can see it even more from down here. The bubble gum on the left, this one over right above the bird's head, right above Cosmo's head. That does pop nicely, but I think the jazzberries pop better. Uh, we've talked about that enough. You get it. They look nice. I think this is probably my favorite thing I've done with these in a long time. Those variegated sun impatience when those start to fill out. That's just going to look absolutely spectacular. Spectacular. Tons of color, <laughs> lots of contrast. I know, some scary noises out here. You're gonna be okay. Plenty of color, lots of contrast, those honeys. Proven winners, you gotta get this one into being one of the Vista series. They've never been the strongest grower for me. Maybe they have some Calabrac blood in them, so they tend to rot out, but hopefully. I mean, they're already looking pretty fantastic. Oh, you can't, not right now, no. Hey, baby, what you got? Did you find your tiny stick? He has the tiniest little stick that he keeps bringing up to me and wants me to throw it to him. I know he was looking pretty mopey right now. He got his nuts chopped yesterday, so he's still kind of out of it. Has to stay dry for 10 days. He's being really good about staying out of the pool, but once he gets more energetic, he's only coming out here on a leash. Just gotta keep him dry. Oh, poor Turbo. The vet was very impressed. They weighed the, we don't need to talk about that. Almost a quarter of a pound. That's how big those things were. Jeez, Turbo. I'm sorry the video's shorter, probably all over the place. This wasn't a typical week for me. Some stuff was going, I mean, I explained all this stuff over the weekend and then some other things happened. Went ahead and I put Cosmo inside. He wasn't feeling the noise of the weed whacker. That's not for him. He's a timid bird. Looking forward to next week. Hopefully going to be getting a ton of stuff planted. The palm trees are supposed to be delivered from the greenhouse. Things are going to be looking very lush and I'll have all my big containers here to start packing the plants in and get things moved around, especially this corner. This has been driving me crazy. I have all the pots lined up that I'm ready to plant up, but I don't have the centerpiece or anything because it's at the greenhouse being stored right now. It's a mess, but once the big palm trees here, this will all be fixed up and I'll get the annuals packed in. It's going to look so nice over there and over there and over there and over there. There will be plants everywhere out here. What is that? Dug Cosmo's old cage out from the garage to give it a good clean up. I want to find a nice shady spot out here to put it so he can be outside with me while I'm doing yard work. I don't, this isn't, I don't want to talk about it. I don't show the birds very often. I did a video a while ago that was like just about the birds and I talked about why I don't talk about them. Ultimately it just came down to that I didn't. I don't really feel good about influencing people to get parrots. They're not a pet for everybody. And I should clarify this is a temporary situation. I'm going to be getting something much larger. An outdoor cage for a bird it needs to be big enough where you can have some misters in it for when it's hot and spots where they can get away from those misters. It's just Cosmo. He's a small bird and we have a lot of hawks out here so this way he can be outside with me while I'm doing things, doing yard work and filming videos and not be alone in the house. Not ready to talk about it but Cosmo's an only child now. My other bird passed away very unexpectedly a couple of days ago and uh, with birds they just they don't do well when stuff like that happens so he's going to be around a lot more uh, even though i had said i don't really like to show the birds birds form really strong bonds and it can be devastating to them when they lose their mate and he's never been alone like ever i think he was maybe two when i got bj so for 21 22 years He's always had that other bird. So he's going to be around a lot more. There's probably going to be a lot of squawking and screaming in the videos. When he's adjusted more and things are feeling more normal, I, uh, I'll have my feelers out to some rescue groups to adopt another senior bird. That's all that's about. Don't, don't want to talk about it, but kind of have to. So that's what's going on there with the birdcage in Cosmo. And to just avoid comments of people asking, where's the other bird? I, 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 I can't. I can't do it. You know, I try and keep it light and happy over here, but... These things happen and the explanation need to be there's what was going on with the birds and also as to why nothing else got done this week. It's only like 10 a.m. I'm thinking it's probably gonna start raining here pretty soon. Yeah, those are some dark clouds. And I, I don't like don't think that I'm like not upset. I am, it's just I don't think this is the place for it. So holding that back, trying to keep it light, even though there's some dark things going on. Breaking a sweat, being physical, that's that's a big part of my therapy, so chances are. There's gonna be a lot getting done out here next week. Like, probably a lot. When I'm in that mindset, I just kinda go, 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 and go. Tend to not stop. Again, sorry for the bummer. I try and keep it light, especially in a video like this where I'm doing something really exciting. Parrot rescues, let me know. There's some good ones here in St. Louis. No one's available right now that 
I think would be a good fit. And it's too soon. It, oh, shit. Getting a little bit windy out here. Okay, you need to calm down. That's not okay. Jeez, I pulled the umbrella right out of the table. Try and keep it light. It was like, hey, yay fun, gardening stuff. And then just boom, right to the gut. Everything's gonna be okay. Just things take time, need to process. <laughs> Another drastic transition. It's the next day, uh, the weather, yeah, okay. Someone's feeling better. Starting to get your voice back, huh, Cosmo? Oh, you want to come up? All right, you can come up. That's fine. That storm was, that was a doozy. That came out of nowhere. There was a tornado, like, it was, like, literally, it was, like, right there. You have zero. There's some pictures on the news, but, you know, show everybody where I live, but it's in the vicinity in those pictures. I wasn't home, which was nerve-wracking. I ran to the bird store and got a new outdoor, indoor, outdoor perch for the bird and got lots of perches to put in the cage and then realized oh I can't even use this cage because the coating's coming off. That's toxic. Not gonna be putting the bird in there but that's okay. I can get a different one to put outside. I was planning on doing that anyways so he's got a nice little place to hang out on the patio as long as someone's around at all times. He'll be okay there. To get the bell off of that toy. Those bells they just make him go crazy. It's not good for him. And then back to plant related things. Got this beautiful ginger potted up over here. Here we go, you gonna come with me? Here we go. There's a piece that got broken. This happens, not the end of the world, and it has a bud on it. This is a Costas Cura Fribrecht blah, blah, blah. It's up here on the screen. Green Mountain Ginger. That's what this one is. It has a nice height to it. Beautiful undertones in the foliage. Isn't that nice? Nice looking ginger. I have compost under my nails, sorry. When I pot up gingers and heliconias, I put a lot of compost in that mix, keep it more dense. It'll hold more moisture that way, and it's just lots of nutrients there. Nutrient hogs, they usually appreciate that. It flowers a lot earlier in the season. With some of the other types, I don't get flowers out of them until like September, sometimes even into October, and that's when we start to have like frosty weather in October, so. Don't always get to appreciate the blooms on them, but this one will have those inflorescences It's coming out more early. It's a nice ginger. Isn't that a nice pot? Love this pot. It's a birthday gift, my little sister. Very pretty, nice and blue. I think it goes well with that one. These things keep getting knocked out. Gotta keep pushing them back in. Should probably grab some staples or something to help hold that in place. It's just gonna keep flopping out. Almost completely redid this after everything happened because the tabletop perches that I had out here, I was like, well, the bird can hop right off there and get to those. And that look really inviting. Like, if you were a parrot, you know you just want to rip those things to pieces and chew on them, and they're toxic, so that would be bad. Don't want that to happen. That's why I got the different stand that can stay over the table, and he can't get down onto the table. It's easy to move in and out of the house. I got a whole bunch of perches, all kinds of bird things. Give me a very spoiled bird. Can I have a kiss? Thanks. Thank you, Cosmo. I've been just wrecking my brain, trying to think of projects I can do sitting here at the table. I just, I think I, that was pretty much it. <laughs> that video already happened. Everything else that needs to be done needs to be done in the landscaping. I wanted to do more in the video. I, I just edited up until a little while ago. I know that I've harped on that enough. It's probably annoying. Sorry there weren't more projects. I can't, I can't put them in the cage because the coating's coming off and I don't have a cage to put them in. I can't really walk away from them and I can't put them inside. I need to be near him. Like it's, it's really serious. Birds go through it. They'll pull their feathers out, get very depressed, and I don't know why I'm going through that. He's an old man I'm trying to make sure he's nice and comfortable and feels safe and secure and things are calm around him, so I can't just be like walking around with him on my shoulder. You wouldn't want that either. You definitely wouldn't want that. He tends to get really loud when I'm talking and he's on my shoulder. Yeah. Oh, you, you had to show him, huh? That was nice of you. Make sure they know. But we'll have a new enclosure, a nice little outdoor space. For Cosmo to hang out in while I'm doing yard work and doing things outside hopefully by the middle of next week and can start having some fun in the garden. It'll probably be entertaining for Cosmo too. Again to watch me walk around the garden talking to a camera just looking like a total lunatic out here. Did want to clarify the cage situation that's like a just for when I'm outside and can't be right next to him so he has some space and there's nice things to look at. Not an overnight thing, not an unattended thing ever. Always going to be like near him and keeping him within my sight. There's some updates for the garden. Got some new growth coming out of the Sable Miners. Temple of Bloom, looking good there. Bananas finally starting to put on 
a nice amount of growth. Having that heat last week or the beginning of the video, that made a big difference. It really just got the plants to push out and get moving. All these bikini teenies coming up over here, the colocasias, and then some of those, what are they, sparkling burgundy eucamus pineapple lilies. Everything's like tripled in size in just a few days. Okay, it apparently so of the weeds. Like I said, I, didn't, I haven't really been out here much. I had this stuff going on, so I'm gonna have to get on top of that. Oh, so easy Italian ice roses, look at them. They're covered in flowers, looking just beautiful. And then the Zingiber gingers, still not much out of them, but more than I expected, because yeah, I think I explained in the last garden tour. I just kind of assumed that they were dead, but they're not. They get a little bit bigger. I'll take the cages off of them. Still need to protect them from the puppy. Can I shoot through it? Can you see it? Not really. Now the hardy begonia is coming up. Haas is doing its thing. Things are starting to get moving out here. The hydrangea trees, those are really filling out. There's a robin's nest up inside that one. I was going to plant these up also as part of this video, uh, but it's, I don't want to disturb the robins. So I don't really know what I'm going to do there. Guess I just have to wait, which kind of sucks because it's probably going to be like a month, but I feel like that would be wrong to get down there. I don't want to upset them. So I don't know that, or maybe I can do it really, really calmly and quietly. I'm gonna think, I think the best thing to do would be to just leave the birds alone, let them do their thing. But seriously though, look at that. Isn't that fantastic? When this is flushed out with flowers, you can be walking around out here with like giant plumes of hydrangeas above your, well, they'll probably hang down. And then instead of being something that you can walk underneath and look up and enjoy the flowers, they'll be like more in your face. That's all right, it'll still look nice. Absolutely nothing has happened down here at all and I need to get on it because I have all those impatience to go on the ground here and they're like they're getting pretty big so the, that ship may have sailed I'm still gonna pull them up though and get the impatience in the front not pulling all of them up just some of them the ones back here doesn't that look nice love that those look so good there they go all the way up the hill and those are gonna go around I did lose a shrub don't really know why it seemed fine and then it just kind of died I don't really know what happened I'm gonna give it a cut back and a repot and just See what goes on there? Not, not one of my top priorities right now. It's not great, but it happens. I'd say I tried my best with that shrub and did everything I could to make it thrive, but that, that'd be a lie. I did nothing, absolutely nothing. I watered it like I always have the past two, three years that I've had it. No time for any of that diva BS. Dramatic plants, they can't stay here. But they're typically not dramatic plants, just don't really know what happened there. I also realized that when I planted up uh, an area down here in a vlog, maybe it was the last vlog that came out. I think it was. Is that when I finished moving the plants outside? I think so. It's been a long week and a half. And I, I talked about moving the hookahs into this planter and I never showed the final results of that. So here's that. There they are. The hookara guacamole is the green one and peach berry ice right there. And then a begonia grandis in the middle that should, or no, that's not a grandis, it's an evansiana. That'll get probably another six inches tall, kind of drape above everything and have these little can we see it? Can I lean far enough forward? And all this with a parrot in one hand, so it's hard to get the focus. There it is. Starting to flower. Just a little random pop of something have tucked away there. I kind of like it. Say, I think that that is where things pretty much end. Can't get much else done out here. So thanks for hanging out. Sorry about the roller coaster stuff going on. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you completely backlit don't forget to comment down below say hi what's going on in your gardens having fun out in nature with this nicer weather nicer weather means like flooding and tornadoes and everything but at least it's not cold outside i did have a hoodie on this morning but that's just the way things go in st louis in the month of may just all over the place and then your thoughts with the petunia changes i'm like pretty dead set on pulling the bubble gums out and probably not using the sky blue or whatever this one's called. I guess you won't be able to comment if I don't tell you what it's called. Blue skies. The thing is like, I don't like it at certain times of the day and then at other times of the day, I do. You can maybe even sort of see how it shifts from being a light blue, which I'm not crazy about, to more of this pinkish blue. Either way, I don't really think it fits over here. I would like to just have the Super Tunia honey and then the jazzberries coming over each side there. Like I said, the bubblegum to me just looks like it's going to appear that some of the jazzberry flowers are faded and uh, it would allow more space for the honeys. I really like how they look, so I'd like for them to do some growing and not get smothered out by the other plants. They're looking beautiful already. I planted these up, what, how long has it been? When did I start filming this video? Eight or nine days ago. And this already, like these look so different than they did when I started filming when I first got this planted up. Look at that one. Isn't that fantastic? 
lots of color in there. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.